Hey developers, today we're gonna look at the top 10 programming languages that you should learn in 2018. So I took some of my favorite programming languages, some of the cutting edge programming languages that have been out for a few years, some are a little bit newer, some a little bit older, and I'm gonna explain to you why I think these are the top 10 programming languages that you guys should take a look at in 2018. Now, these are languages, they're not on top of any kind of list. They're not on top of GitHub's most popular programming languages. They're not on top of any other lists. These are my personal own choices. And like I said, I'm really looking future forward. So if you're watching this in 2018 or the end of 2017, you can really see that these are languages that are emerging. These are programming languages that are becoming more and more popular every day. So I really think that these are the ones that you guys should really take take a look at and you guys should take a look at and learn. And before we begin, let me just remind you guys to please click that subscribe button. That really helps me. I like to lo I love to do programming videos. I love to teach you guys. So without further ado, let's begin. And number 10 is Dart. The Dart programming language was created in October 10th, 2011 created by Lars Beck and Casper Lund. So it basically, it's a general purpose programming language. Uh, it has a standard ECMAScript. And what really, what I really like about it is you can compile it to JavaScript, you can use it in the Dartium browser, it's standalone. Google uses it in some of the very, very large web apps. And I think it's one of those programming languages that we don't hear a lot about, but there's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes scenes on it and especially for Google. So I think this is one of the programming languages we need to keep an eye out for. It's definitely on the up and up and it's especially important if you're like in an enterprise setting and you're creating larger web apps. At number nine is the Crystal programming language. Crystal is a general purpose object oriented programming language designed by Ari Barzuing and John Wagenerman and it's created by the Manus Technology Solutions. And so it's a programming language. It has a syntax very similar to Ruby, but it's supposed to be giving a little bit more performance, kind of C-like performance to it to create cutting edge web apps. I've heard a lot of good things about Crystal coming up. A lot of people love Ruby and everybody's trying to create like the better Ruby type programming language. And I think Crystal is, is one of them. One of its taglines is fast as C, slick as Ruby. So you kind of get an idea of you can just really, really quickly get up and running and it's super fast and it's super quick programming language. And it's definitely something you should take a look at, especially if you are already interested in Ruby. At number eight is the R programming language. So R is an open source programming language and software environment for statistical computing and graphics. So it is supported by the R Foundation for Statistical Computing. It's been around for like 24 years from, since 1993. So it's definitely been around a lot, but I keep on hearing more and more about different companies finding R programmers because taking data, especially big data, any sort of data and using it through an R and trying to extract statistical data is extremely important. A lot of people want to parse different data they have so much information, they don't know how to make it meaningful. And having a, a statistician and someone has good, inf good uh, R programming skills, you can really take that data and make it into something that makes a lot of sense. And I've actually used this. Uh, I took a, a few classes in college and I took some stats classes and I decided to use R to do some statistics with it. And it was really simple to get up and running. It was easy to create code, to create programs with. Um, I definitely th recommend this, and I think it's something that, as the years go by, I think more and more people are going to talk about R and its influence and what we can do with it. So keep an eye out for it. At number seven is the Swift programming language. So this is a general purpose, multi-paradigm, compiled programming language developed by Apple for iOS, macOS, watchOS, tvOS, and Linux. So of course, uh, this and with a conjunction of Objective C, this is exactly what you want to learn if you want to get into programming for your mobile devices, especially for any iOS or Apple product out there. You want to learn Swift. And uh, Swift was originally appeared in 2014, it's three years old. Of course, the Apple App Store and and people creating apps have gone back much farther than that. But I still think that there's plenty of opportunity in the mobile space to create web apps and to create mobile apps specifically. 
And one thing I like about using Swift, I mean, you're using native code on your mobile device. You're not trying to transpile something from one JavaScript to to something else, or you're using some third-party program. I like being able to program on the device itself. So I would highly recommend programming in Swift. I think it's one of those programming languages that are going to keep on getting popular. I think mobile is exploding. It's been exploding for the last three years. So I think this is you'll be well worth uh, understanding Swift, and it is still, I think, a little bit on the on the cutting edge side. So take a look. At number six is the Elm programming language. So Elm is a domain-specific programming language for declaratively creating web browser-based graphical user interface. So it's a purely functional programming language. So it has an emphasis on usability. I've heard a lot of good stuff coming out of the Elm world lately. I mean, they've had so many different libraries, so many things are coming out of it. So I, I would highly recommend taking a look at Elm if you want to create your web page, uh, your web apps. So it has it compiles targets for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And it has a package manager, has time travel debugger, installers for Mac and Windows, and the ecosystem and community. The drivers, excuse me, the libraries are just exp just uh, keep on expanding. So Elm is kind of the cutting edge programming language. It was created in 2012 by Evan Sablacki. So it has a lot of stuff going for it right now. And there's, I've heard a lot of people using Elm with uh, Phoenix, with Elixir. So there's a lot of stuff happening between this programming language being on your front end and then kind of pairing it with another functional programming language on the back end. So we'll talk more about that in the future. But definitely Elm is one that is going to be continue to grow and it's one to look out for in 2018. At number five is the Go programming language, sometimes known as Golang. It's another programming language created by Google in 2009 by Robert Greismer, Rob Pike, and Kim Thompson. It's a compiled statically typed language. So if you're familiar with C or C++, you definitely will see some similarities between Go and those programming languages. It's very quick. There's a lot of the community and ecosystem behind Go is enormous. A lot of people like it. A lot of people jump, jumped on the Go bandwagon a few years ago. It was originally created in 2009. It had a stable release in October 25th, 2017, about 47 days ago. I know it has its own web frameworks. It has a lot of things going for it. So I have to add it to the list that Go Lang should be something you guys take a look at as we move forward into 2018. At number four is TypeScript. TypeScript is a free and open source programming language developed and maintained by Microsoft. Basically, it's a superset of JavaScript, which adds static typing to the language. So if you've ever usual, used visual code and you've had some autocomplete using TypeScript, you've known that this is an awesome, amazing programming language. It's a lot of things you wish we had in JavaScript, that, but we don't. So I've been using it for a little while, a couple of my projects. I know there's a lot of web frameworks that have decided to go with TypeScript, including Angular and Aurelia, but you can usually get it working with almost everything out there. There's usually some kind of plugin or add-on that can add TypeScript to your framework of choice in your JavaScript ecosystem. So it was created in 2015, uh, 20, excuse me, 2012, five years ago. So it's it's still fairly new and it's being more and more adopted. So it also gives you some of the ES 2015 support um, inside of it. So there's a lot of cool things in, inside of TypeScript that you guys can take a look at. Uh, it has generics, modules, namespaces, compiler. Um, so it compiles down. Um, there's a lot of neat things with TypeScript. I keep hearing more and more about it, so I definitely think you guys should check it out if you're interested in the JavaScript ecosystem and you want to have a statically way of typing your JavaScript code. At number three is Rust. Rust is a systems programming language that runs blazingly fast, prevents seg faults, and guarantees thread safety. So that's a really important thing. So it has kind of this C-like syntax behind it. And it's super fast, has pattern matching type inference. It has efficient C bindings. So it's one of those programming languages that you probably keep hearing about, but it's uh, 
it's kind of under the radar for a lot of people. But I think the year of 2018, we're gonna. This is gonna be more and more popular. More and more people are gonna be talking about it. It was originally created in 2010, 2010 about seven years ago. So, but it's uh, like I said, static typing, strong, inferred. The syntax is really simple to use, really simple to get started, and the community is slowly growing. But it's important that to realize that there's a lot of projects that have been developed in Rust, like Firefox Quantum. So there, it, the 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 whole ecosystem is pretty big. Cargo is the Rust build automation system, and it has a pretty good community people behind it. Um, for example, Tor's actually that's an anonymous network is actually behind it too. So I would keep your eye out for Rust. At number two is Kotlin. Kotlin is a statically typed programming language that runs on the JVM or also known as the Java Virtual Mas Machine. And it can also be compiled to JavaScript source code or used in the LLVM compiler infrastructure. So it's a statically typed, it's inferred. It was originally appeared in 2011. It's gone, uh, gained a lot of popularity late uh, this year in 2017. And I suspect in 2018, 2019 and beyond, it will continue to be to gain more and more momentum and popularity, especially for those Java programmers out there, because you can take Kotlin, which is a very simple syntax, really powerful. You can compile it down to a jar and you can put it inside your normal Java projects. And you know, the Java C ecosystem is so huge. So a lot of people have been looking at this Kot Kotlin and been using it in their projects. It has IntelliJ IDEA, has a plugin support for it. JetBrains has support for it. You know, I've uh, I was reading the Manning book on it. We've been debating using it in some of our Java projects at work, at my work. So I would highly recommend looking at this. The original contributors, uh, the developed by was JetBrains, and it's of course open source. So Kotlin and pretty much Java is something to always look forward to every year because it keeps growing and things keep changing. And the number one top programming language that you should learn in 2018 is Elixir. Elixir is a functional concurrent general purpose programming language that runs on the Erlang virtual machine. So I have been using Elixir for some of my own projects for quite a bit of time. I've been using it with a framework called Phoenix that's on top of it that makes using doing web development really simple. I've heard of a lot of people using Phoenix and using Elm together or Phoenix and using something like Ember.js. So Elixir is makes that happen. It's I it's really simple to get into. It's really easy to get running on your Mac, your Windows, OS. Of course, it's completely cross-platform with all your different favorite OSs and operating systems. It's really lightweight. It's super fast. You can break a down processes. So it's it's something that I think this is really a lot of programmers are going this way of this functional programming. And a lot of people are looking at these languages and admiring it, and especially something like, like Elixir and how easy it is to use and how easy it is to create awesome, amazing apps and be able to bring in web development with the different frameworks that it has. And it has a fully plugged in structure where you can download um, plugins and modules. So there's there's quite a bit happening in the Elixir world. And I think it's highly recommended that you start learning it. These are all languages. All 10 of these languages have been, langu have been a little bit on the cutting edge because I think as time passes, we need to start looking at not just the same old JavaScript, not the same old Java, C Sharp that everybody else is saying to recommend. I would say these new programming languages are coming up. There are looking, there are more and more jobs are opening up for these languages. And once you know one of these languages, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be able to jump over to another one of these other languages pretty easily. Thank you for so much for watching the video. If you like these type of videos, definitely click that subscribe button. That really helps me. And also if you're learning to program, I put some of my favorite links to some of my favorite courses below. You can learn all about JavaScript, Angular. If you're brand new to programming, these are great places to start some of my favorite courses. Just go ahead and click any of those links below. By the way, they are affiliate, so I do make a couple bucks. Help support the channel if you end up clicking on them. And thank you so much for watching. Take care.